Okay, Lord, be my everything, my mouth, my words, and let me speak nothing but you and you crucified. Amen. I just got a uh, comment on, um, I believe it was a post, a video that I shared. Um, and I really hope and pray that this person doesn't mind um, me sharing this because it goes along with what the Lord put on my heart this morning when I woke up. And that is, um, there's a, a book that David wrote called um, Holiness Comes from Assurance, Not the Other Way Around. And I have it in my playlist uh, as well. I read it uh, out loud. And it was an absolute blessing because it showed through Scripture that our assurance in Christ does not come from our works or from how much we don't sin, um, how much we read our Bibles, how much we pray. We have to get through our head that we can do nothing. <laughs> okay. I don't know if anybody saw the meme that... Um, that uh, Sister Colleen put up that says, I can do all, uh, it was on, on a, uh, a mug, a uh, coffee mug that says, I can do all things through, through Christ, through misunderstanding of a, or through um, misconception of a verse or something like that. And it was perfect because a lot of um, pulpit puppets, as I like to call them, because, yeah, anyway, um, and along with their parrots that, you know, basically squawk what, what they're preaching. Um, they like to say that, oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, you know. Um, but yet their strength is in their flesh. So they're not allowing Christ to be their everything because one they don't understand the flesh if you don't understand the flesh you're going to keep thinking that it's all on you um another thing that the pulpit puppets love to say is god helps those who help themselves okay i'll tell you that's a bunch of crap i used to get that one when i was growing up so bad um from not only my pastor from high school, because I went to a Christian private school, um, uh, and um, also uh, two famous uh, uh, pastors, that one being at my school and uh, another one being uh, my uh, church pastor that I grew up with, um, saying that along with my father. So I was getting it from every side. So I was getting it on Sundays. I was getting it almost every day from my father. And um, and then at school. So I was pretty messed up um, thinking that it was all on me. And I was terrified. Terrified. And I think I'm going to call this video... Um, Drop the shoes of fear and step into the shoes of peace and assurance. Put on the shoes of peace and assurance. I don't know. I'll think of something. Lord will lead me. Um, but the point is, is that holiness is not anything that we do. Okay. It does not come from us. It is all Christ. And I'm not a Bible teacher, okay? Um, I just love to share the comforts that Christ has given me through so many years of struggling and failing and crying out to him. 
and him just coming and just picking up, picking me up like a uh, injured animal and taking in and taking and just taking me into himself and, and caring for me and loving me and not condemning me or putting the burden on me. Um, you know, I know I keep saying me, 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 but I'm, I, I'm saying that it's not about me. It's about what he does, you know, for us. And so through experiences, that's where I, I have to say through my, um, failures is where I get my strength, if that makes sense. But it's not my strength, it's his, because he's the one that um, is my, it turns out to be my everything, even through failure. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it's, uh, I don't explain things very well, and you know, that's probably why I'm not a teacher. Um, but I just, I just, I feel it in my spirit, and it's like, I just want to share it. And when I, I, I see comments that say that, you know, I'm struggling with this, or I'm struggling with that, or misconceptions of, you know, the unforgivable sin that we, I remember a couple of years ago we had, and I'll tell you right now, this, this video is going to be all over the place, so bear with me, please. Um, because I have so many things going on in my mind that I want to share. Um, and they're all Christ. They're all the goodness of Christ and how it's not about us, okay? But the pulpit puppets want to make it about us. And that's what's so frustrating because you see how, okay, the unforgivable sin, they can, they sometimes even put it as, you know, a sexual sin or, um, uh, uh, uh never saying or no, uh, not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Um, all these misconceptions of taking all these verses that are meant for our good they take them and they turn them into something evil and disgusting. And then you have the parrots that just take it and run with it and put the burden on so many people that are listening that think, oh no, now I have to do this. I have to do this now. I was, gosh, I didn't know that. Why didn't it, why didn't my pastor tell me this or something? You know what I'm saying? They're always looking to the pastor. Stop looking to the pastor, okay? For one, it's not a title that gives him his knowledge. The, or the title itself does not give him his knowledge or, or even her sometimes, you know? Um, the knowledge of Christ is right there. It's the knowledge of Christ. It's who you are in Christ. And if you believe, and I'm going to say this for someone specifically, if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures for, scriptures for your justification, okay, he becomes your everything. He becomes your justification. He becomes your sanctification. He becomes your reward and he becomes your righteousness. Okay? He is your everything. And the blood of Christ is what speaks for you. The moment you believe that, you are sealed with the eternal spirit. Okay? His, his life-giving eternal spirit. The word sealed, it means you cannot lose what you have. You can't lose it. Because Christ cannot deny himself. So no matter what you doubt, no matter how your mind is um, maybe being manipulated by certain teachings and everything, you cannot lose your salvation, okay? So I want to make that very clear. That is a fundamental... Um, principle right there that you cannot lose your salvation okay now that we got that out of the way 
because the blood covers you. The blood now speaks for you. You are covered under his blood. And nothing can take you out of it or from under it. Okay? Nothing. So get that right there or get that in your mind and know that, um, yeah, you're sealed. Okay? The moment you believe. And <laughs> mm. it just it, it is it, it it blows my mind how much false teaching is out there after being out outside the camp for so many years now and knowing that people are so not enjoying Christ Like they can because of false teaching. Anyway, I'm kind of going way off topic of where I wanted to go here, but I'm just saying that for, you know, for some people's benefits here, that you cannot lose your salvation. Okay. Um, moving on. Number two. Uh, again, that the, the un, unforgivable sin, that's unbelief. Okay. It's not anything attached to any kind of um, actual sin, okay? It is, the sin of unbelief is nothing more than unbelief in the blood. Not believing in the gospel. That's the unforgivable sin. That is the only thing. Not believing in the gospel. And it's all by faith alone. No works. Okay, um, so do not let anybody tell you that the unforgivable sin is a specific sin or some sexual sin or something like that. They're full of crap and you need to mark and avoid them. Okay. Um, again, the, the, about the, the holiness, um, a lot of pastors like to say that, you know, if you follow a bullet point um, um, teaching that they give <sighs> that you could be more like them. Holy and you know just above everybody else. Um, I could think of a couple that uh, fit that bill very well. And, um, it's nothing but filthy rags. Um, holiness, again, comes from Christ, okay? And it comes from our assurance in Christ. We present ourselves as sacrifices on the altar that's already been made holy, okay? Okay. We're not holy because of our works. We are, our holiness doesn't come from our works. It, 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 it is Christ who has sanctified us, sanctified the altar by, and then, and then by us laying down and, um, you know, basically letting him live through us. I know I suck at this stuff, you know, explaining, um, and I, again, that's why I don't teach. Um, but it's got nothing to do with us. And another um, time I remember was being told that I had certain infirmities. Like, for instance, I have um, uh, only a partial kidney left and um, uh, kidney disease. Okay, like stage four. Um but praise God through doing, um, just taking care of myself and just, you know, re totally relaxing and, and resting in Christ, knowing that I have no problem. I used to be afraid of, you know, taking that last breath, but I'm not anymore. Um, 
because I have nothing to be afraid of. If anything, I'm more excited than ever. Um, but I, we're not guaranteed our, our next, next breath, you know? Um, so I just live faith to faith every day. That's it. You know? Um, and I don't expect anything from me at all. Um, it's like minute by minute. I mean, way I'm, I, I, I know a lot of people can just speak and um, it just flows out. Eh, don't do that with me. Uh, and I tend to get down on myself because I think, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't speak or anything. But yet it's like I have this desire to share the comforts that he has given me through my infirmities. And one of the things that I remember growing up was I was told that the reason why I had all these issues or this disease was because I had sin in my life <laughs> and I was being punished. Um, another bag of BS. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh man. I'm just so thankful, so, so thankful for the word of God in proper context and for his teachers that uh, show it clearly and how Holy Spirit can show each and every one of us through the eyes of Christ and putting Christ in the middle of the scripture and seeing that it is for our good and not a beating, not law you know um this is why we have you know teachers and um exhorters and um you know all the gifts of the spirit is to edify the church it is not to beat down okay um telling somebody that they're going they're going to go to hell because um, or they lost their salvation because they don't have a specific gift, um, which I've also heard and told. And again, I lived in fear for so many years of my life. It's no wonder my hair is gray. Um, because religious abuse is just that. It is abuse. It is so debilitating mentally because the enemy takes a foothold of that and just beats you down to a pulp. And you're lying there bleeding like, you know, like the Good Samaritan, you know. Um, that's, that's Christ picking up this bloody, beaten, uh, mess of a person that, and Missy says hi, um, that has been just so damaged by a so-called church or anybody who speaks law to them or any, any kind of doctrines of demons. It doesn't matter what false doctrine it is, it's all um, crap because it's not Christ. It's not who God is and it's not what he, his plan for humanity ever was. And this is the reason why I hate the institutional church, which is not really a church. It is a, it's called so-called church because church the church specifically speaking is the body of christ and the body of christ was given the gifts of the spirit to edify one another and to be one with the spirit of christ okay and the father and the spirit the, the, through the show the father's love through christ through his holy spirit through his life-giving spirit Okay, 
And you don't hear that in those pulpits. All you hear is you need to do this. And if you don't do this, you're not going to get the blessing. Well, these are nothing more, as David says, but babies. And I'll go even further, and I think I've said this in a post before. They're nothing more than babies in, in so-called uh, golden diapers that like to show off, and they're spewing out nothing but crap out of their mouths and lies and, and just downright deceitfulness. Now, I'm not saying all because I know I'm going to have some that come back at me saying, well, I have, I love my church and everything. Well, okay, fine. Great. You know, great. Wonderful. If you can gain Christ and still be in an institutional church and not feel like you're under anybody's thumb, then okay. But I guarantee it's not going to last. Because the more you gain Christ, the more it's going to interact and, or, or um, not interact, um, uh, be the opposite of what they're teaching. Somewhere, some lo along the lines, there is going to be Galatian error that it will be taught. And then you're going to get confused. So, just forewarning. Um, and yeah, um, my, my language is strong on this because I know the damage because I dealt with it myself and I'll, I've seen it being done to others. And it really screwed me up big time, especially when I had a first, uh, my first ex-husband um, was studying to be a pastor. <laughs> you know, do you know how nerve wracking that is? To think of yourself as a pastor's wife and having to keep this image. And I have to I had to grow up having to keep an image in um uh in church because of my family. Because it was all about looking good for the pastor. You know, my family gave so much money. <laughs> it just went down the drain. But they were, they felt obligated. And that's what pastors do. They make you feel obligated to God. Obligated to tithe. Obligated to do this. Obligated to do that. God doesn't put a burden on anyone we put a burden on ourselves through institutional fake church teachings. That's where it comes from. And you can go back even in Jesus' days. What was the headquarters? <laughs> Jerusalem. The teachings of James, or, you know, or the, not the teachings of James, but, um, well, yeah, they use the teaching of James a lot now, even even now. Um, this is nothing new. And when you study the history of it and everything, and you see how screwed up the 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 understanding of what true faith was. And I'm not talking about. Well, I, I I don't want to use the word true. How do I say this? Um, the true gospel of grace, through infinite grace, uh, through reconciliation, through faith alone, versus through having to go to temple, um, you know, follow the feasts. Um, you know, it, it's, it's the same as it was then as it is today. It's a mixture. The mixture is within the walls the truth and the peace and the understanding is outside the walls and the freedom. <laughs> Everybody, I, I remember I, I, I got a bad, or not a bad, a, um, 
uh, a comment from somebody saying that, you know, fellowship through the church was the best thing they ever, they ever had. Well, yeah, it, you know, they found it, they found it through church. Okay, yeah, that's called love bombing. They love bomb you first. It's not till later, till they uh, see you doing something wrong that they'll, you know, call you out on it, okay? And then claim that you're, you know, bitter and everything like that and that you, uh, you know, just don't want to have uh, anything to do with God and that you're backsliding and blah, blah, blah. Um, no, 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 no. Do not let the false teachings make you think that you are not loved by God because you are you have no idea how much you were loved you are so loved by God and he wants nothing more than to show you that love through his assurance and through his promises. And when we renew our minds in Christ and our, his blood sprinkles our evil conscience with the washing of the water of the word. I don't remember the verse that talks about that, but you know, it just, it flows over you and it shows you that you are loved. You are accepted. No matter what condition you have, God still loves you. God still cares about you. And he wants nothing more than to shower you with blessing. Because you are, technically you already have it. He is our reward. He is our blessing. He is our everything. They don't want you to be happy. They don't want you to joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength, okay? Okay. When you joy in Christ, it is a strengthening of your faith in the assurance of Christ. The blood. The blood speaks for us. We are covered under his blood. We don't have to answer to anyone who is accusing us. of, you know, sinning or, or you know, or, or, or being uh, lazy or anything like that. We don't owe them anything. And it's a, I'll, I'll admit, it's a weakness for me because when I hear that, it's just like, okay, and I think I've said it a couple times, you know, oh, you're sinning, you're, you know, um, you're lazy, you just want to lay in your filth and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you want to be the pot or the kettle? Because right now you're both. Okay? Um, we're all sinners. But we're sinners saved by grace. And through our weakness, He is our strength. He is our everything. He is our advocate. He is our high priest. And we can come boldly to the throne of grace because we have been justified by faith through his blood to God and through his finished work. It's finished. There's nothing that we have to do to try and justify ourselves or try to keep ourselves. We walk by faith. We walk faith to faith. The just shall live by faith. Let's go to that verse because that is a really good verse. If I can find it here. Hang on. Where 
am I at? Ah, I'm just going to go ahead and read this one. I was going to put this up in a post, but I'll go ahead and read it. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 3, and I was reading this morning. I'll start with verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more than which remains is glorious. Seeing, come on, seeing that we have such hope, we use great plain, plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at or look to at the end of look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is reading, the veil is upon their hearts. There's so many out there that are veiled to the shoes of assurance, <laughs> the shoes of peace, the gospel, you know, that are so, they don't want to go through the veil. They don't want to have anything to do with the Holy of Holies, the, the, um, the peace, the rest, the pasture, where the milk and honey are actually flowing, you know, and it's all from Christ. Now the Lord is that, uh, nevertheless, when it, sh okay. Um, now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit is, or where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's outside the camp. That's not inside. Okay. But we all with open face behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Again, it's not about us. We rest in our assurance in Christ. We don't try and bring it for ourselves. Make it for ourselves. There is nothing that we can do do we live as christ we live through christ through his spirit not us trying to make it in the flesh because that's what majority of pulpit puppets like to do is put it all on you and then parade their flesh their fleshly works in front of everybody and say how great i am and i'm the king and blah 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 you know, in so many words, you know, um, hurt it all, make you feel like crap, condemn you. Um, yeah, that's not Christ, but that's not what I wanted to read. Actually, I wanted to read, um, hmm, what is it? What is it? Romans one sixteen. Oops. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Not the just shall live by works and faith. It's the just shall live by faith. Um, God wants nothing more than your faith. That's it. He just wants you to believe. Believe in what he provided for you, which was the propitiation, Christ himself, as your everything, as your life. Everybody wants to put the emphasis on sin. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's not sins that we, that we can't get into that, um, you know, we either need to be taken out of the, or, or put away for the fellowship, like in, um, like the brother in first, first Corinthians, um, you know, in order for our flesh to, uh, to be turned over to Satan to kill the flesh, 
okay, and allow God to uh, basically break it, you know, break us. When you're struggling with any kind of sin whatsoever, it's not until you come to the end of yourself are you going to find rest. Because if you keep struggling and struggling and thinking that it's all you and all on you, you are never going to find rest. When you say, I can't, there's no way. I am helpless. I am hopeless. And I'm referring to the flesh, okay? I'm referring to, to, to trying to do it on your own. Because we are not hopeless. Christ is our hope of glory in us, okay? So he is 100% our hope. Um, but in the flesh, we are hopeless. And we have no assurance we have no holiness. Um, kind of reminds me of, of, of the verse that talks about uh, how, you know, before we got saved, we were, um, we had no holiness. We had, or what is it? We had no righteousness or had no holiness or something like that. I can't remember where it's at. Um, and then now that we are saved, um, we're no longer slaves to that, but we're slaves to righteousness. And I never understood that verse. Never understood it. It took me a long, long time to understand that verse. And now I finally understand it. Um, and that one has been, you know, taken out of context as well. And I'm not going to say I'm going to explain it perfectly, but because um, I can't even think of it. I'm horrible with remembering verses, sorry. Um, but it was basically saying that, you know, you didn't, you weren't sin conscious or anything like that before you got saved. And yet you were a slave to sin. Okay. Now that you're saved, you're, you know, we become slaves to righteousness and it's not our righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness. Um, I know I'm probably totally screwing this up, but I, like I said, I understand it in my mind, but it's so hard to explain um, for me. That, that is a, it's, it's a weakness of mine. I, I don't even know why I even talk. Um, <laughs> um, again, taking a leap of faith here. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and shut up. Um, I was going to show something. Oh, yes. I wanted to read, uh, if you saw, or I hear, I'll just show it to you. Um, I don't want to read it because, well, yeah, I guess I will read it. Um, Petra put up a video today, and it was interesting because... I, I saw this and I was like, huh, you know, here I was waking up this morning with that same kind of thinking on my mind and going, well, I can't explain anything like this. You know, I can, you know, just share through experience and, you know, I don't think I'll do justice to that, but whatever. Um, I'm still going to do it because it is. And then I also, and then the comment that I got um, from someone just really uh, touched my heart and because I saw the struggle that they were in and just the, 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 the fear, the, the fear of, uh, of going in the lake of fire, you know, um, did I lose my salvation, um, because of all the false teachings that they've been, uh, that they've been told. So I'm going to read this and pray that it blesses that person and not only, um, that one, but you know, just the church in general to know that our holiness does not come from anything that we do or anything that we say or anything uh, religious, you know, that people claim will bring us closer to God. Um, if it's done out of any kind of demand, it, no, 
you know, it's all in vain. It's all, it's all, it's all, um, uh, it's filthy rags, you know, but when we desire to want to know Christ and he's the only one that can put that desire in us. Okay. Um, that desire comes from his spirit to our spirit and bubbles out and it's all, it's all Christ. Everything is about Christ and the gospel and the riches that come out of the gospel. And when we look at the word and read the word that is Christ himself and see that he is on every single freaking page, even if you read a verse that sounds condemning, know that it is not to condemn. It's to edify, to learn, to understand, to warn. You know, the dogs, the, the evildoers, um, you know, that um, a, lot of, um, uh, a lot of our brothers and sisters have been, uh, you know, Posts have been putting up about because they've been getting a lot of comments. I mean, it's like the floodgates have opened um, recently with these just very not nice people that want to do nothing but beat you with a stick. And some of them are very subtle about it because they try to act like they are so high and mighty and know so much about the Bible and you're reading and they're giving you an interpretation and you're going, huh? You know, again, it sounds like the peanuts teacher. Womp, 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 womp. And you're like, huh? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, okay, if you believe that, if that's what you want to believe that that scripture says, then uh, I got some awesome oceanfront property for you here in uh, Wyoming. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can get kind of froggy, sorry. All right, so the post that Petra did, it says, do you get freaked out when someone quotes uh, 1 Peter 1, by you holy for I, or be you holy for I am holy? And you, you see these verses and yeah, you think, oh, well, okay, so how can I do that? You know, so you're automatically thinking in your mind, what do I do instead of seeing that it's not about you, Okay. You are holy because Christ is holy, but it's not your holiness. It's Christ's holiness. And it's not through anything you do. It's through his sacrifice. Again, our quote unquote, if you want to call it job is just to believe faith to faith. And even if you don't understand any, uh, a certain verse, we still say amen, like that one verse that talks about, you know, even though we don't understand, um, we still say amen because we know that he has promised us to show us um, understanding of scripture when we allow Holy Spirit to speak through us and, and or, or speak to us and show us. And I'm not talking about an audible or anything like that. I'm talking about just through his word. Speaking truth through his word, knowing in your spirit that, ah, you have assurance. I understand it now. I know who I am in Christ. I know that I am a child of God because the spirit is the one that's bearing witness in me. It's not because of anything I do. It's because he cannot deny himself. And the spirit speaks of Christ. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's all about Christ. It's all about Christ. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former less in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be you holy for I am holy. Now, Listen to this, okay? We can't attain holiness in our own strength. No flesh can glory in his presence. 
You hear that, pulpit puppets? You hear that, parrots? Nothing in your flesh is going to be remembered. It's all going to be burned up. That has nothing to do with losing your salvation. Okay? Know that for the Bema Sea is nothing more than a celebration of our flesh going into the fire and being done with forever. Do you know how glorious that is going to be? It is going to be freaking awesome. And we are left with nothing but whatever precious stones and, and, uh, and, uh, what are they, uh, uh, um, precious stones and other things I can't think of, but, uh, jewels, you know, just all the works of Christ that were so precious made that made it through the fire because it all came from him and not a hint of our flesh was involved. And it's going to be laid at his feet. So there's not going to be any glorying and boasting and carrying of crowns for other people to carry around of yours. It's, <laughs> it's too, I'm sorry, I have to laugh because some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, it's ridiculous. That is all the flesh. That is so nothing but disgusting Filthy rags of putrid flesh. It's got nothing to do with Christ. Um, it is only through him. Okay, so we, we cannot, okay, so we can't attain, we can't attain to holiness in our, our strength. No flesh can glory in his presence. It is only through him that we have wisdom Righteousness, sanctification, also translated as holiness in other verses, and redemption. In uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 25 through 31, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised has God chosen. Yes, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. Same Greek word, sanctification, in verse 30 is used in 1 Peter 1.2, sanctification of the Spirit. 1 Peter 1.2 Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. So she goes on to say that it also is in uh, Romans six nineteen through 22. Um, again, holiness is by the Spirit, you know, walking in the Spirit, walking by the Spirit and not the flesh. And that does not mean being a better person, being a holier person, you know. No, it just means reminding yourself, or I mean, um, uh, renewing your mind in who we are in Christ and walking by faith to faith, walking in that faith. And it's just enjoying Christ and, you know, like I said, resting. And... Nobody who is trying to do anything in their flesh is resting. And we have to enter, we have to start to enter that rest every day. Because the enemy likes to throw us, you know, curveballs every now and then and say, oh, you can do this. You know, just, you know, it's, it's actually God doing it, but, you know, you can help him out a little bit. No, you can't. 
Okay? So, you can do nada. It is all Christ. And that's it in a nutshell. And when we start to rest in not, and it, it, we, you know, when we start to rest in that knowledge and that assurance that it is not about us, it is about Christ and Him crucified and Him living through us. And how He does all that is through enjoyment, getting to know Him. Um, again, it's all about resting in our assurance in Christ, his promises, knowing that he is going to take care of his children. The sons of God are not going to be left out in the cold. He doesn't do that. He may allow you to go through some things. It's only to kill your flesh. To show you that you don't need to keep trying to earn your way back to him because you already are there. You're already baptized into his body. You're crucified with him. You know, your flesh is dead and buried and your life is hidden with Christ. Our life as the body is hidden with Christ. We got nothing to show. Nothing to glory over except Christ himself in us being our life-giving spirit, being our everything. There's nothing in the flesh to boast about. So if you don't know the flesh and what it is and that he is been done with it since the flood and you don't understand that I highly encourage you to go to christiansneedthegospel.com go to the learning hub and ask that question and I guarantee you will find out real fast what exactly the flesh is and how anything we do in it as even saved sinners profits nothing to the body of Christ there is zero Christ in the flesh including especially the religious I don't care how nice they are I don't care how knowledgeable they think they are if they're boasting in the flesh and claiming that they're so godly and you need to be more like me. Run, Forrest, run. That's all I got to say. As Greg would say. <laughs> um, yeah, where am I here? I got to see where I am. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've been talking for an hour. Gee, Manitli. Okay, I'm just going to um, encourage y'all to go to Petra's uh, channel. Um, Petra Anatis. Uh Hopefully I said that right. I always forget. And check out this post. Um, I did not mean for this to go this long. I really, really didn't. Um, yeah. But sometimes I know that when I get going and stuff, it's like it, I just can't. Sometimes just can't stop because it's like I just feel it. I, I do feel it flowing sometimes. Um, but anyway, I'm going to shut up now. And I just pray that. Maybe something in this, bless somebody. Um, if not, you know, that's what it is. Um, I just put up the new um, first chapter of uh, Genesis. So uh, feel free to check that out. Um, and I pray you have a beautiful blessed day. And um, just rest in Christ. And don't listen to the haters. 